Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is Daniel Umstead, host of the RNG Radio Show. I got another great guest, actually another great author here on the RNG Radio Show. But before he gets to bragging about who he is, let me break down where he's actually coming from. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is like my sixth international podcast. So, this gentleman uh, currently living in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. He is a self-published author of over 90 books. So, there's some directions to this. Google Kobo, K-O-B-O, and my guest name, John Lester, uh, where you can pretty much check him out. He's also been a guest on several podcasts. If you actually go on YouTube and uh, search the name, uh, one of the recent ones, and this is actually why I'm reaching out to him today and why he's on the show right now, is we're definitely going to be talking about journey and what you should be doing now. So that's definitely going to be part of it. Uh, but check out his Facebook group page called Johnny's Way. And uh, also, uh, he's also got a podcast as well, the Johnny's Way Podcast. So ladies and gentlemen, without further Further ado, thank you again so much for being here. Uh, John Leister, ladies and gentlemen, John Leister. John, how are you doing today, man? I'm fine, Daniel. How are you? Thank you so much for having me as a guest on your podcast. It's a great honor, and I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely, man. Listen, I'm honored, too. So let's get into, uh, just, just tell the uh, folks about who you are, what you currently got going on right now. And I definitely do have a couple of author questions I want to ask you. Okay, sure. Well, first of all, thank you for that great introduction. That was very flattering and uh, heartwarming and right on the money. Well, as you said, I live in Vancouver. I'm a very patriotic Canadian, as you can tell. And uh, I grew up in an age uh, in the 1970s uh, where it was kind of stigmatized to be a comic book fan. And that's what I was as a boy. I was a little nerd. I had a huge Marvel and DC Comics collection. And, you know, if you're a Canadian boy and you don't like hockey, you know, you considered kind of a weirdo. I just didn't come to this physical realm with the sports gene. I have nothing against sports. I think sports are great. I just never really I had any real interest in them. So uh, when I was a boy, I wanted to be a comic book artist, but I got lazy and I gave that up. And then I guess I was too extroverted at the time. And then after high school, I uh, tried acting. Uh, there was an acting school in the 1980s called the Breck Academy. One of the, one of the stars of a Western from the 1960s called The Big Dolly. It's an American show, probably before your time. Uh, Peter Breck, he came to Vancouver. And this is during the 1980s when the film and TV industry really started to boom. And so I tried acting for a couple of years. And that was an amazing experience. I got to meet Gene Hackman and Richard Dreyfus. They came to the Academy. I mean, they were huge stars back in the day. And uh, I was an extra in Rocky IV. That's kind of my 15 minutes of fame, there was an open. Yeah, I was. I was actually. I'm actually chanting Rocky, Rocky for um, for one day anyway. I went with my buddy Jeff, and so we got to see Stallone and Dolph Lundgren duke it out in the ring. And I was doing some writing back then too. The one constant in my life uh, has always been writing. And so what happened was, I don't mean to gross you out or any of your listeners. I'm just sharing my story. And thank you for this opportunity. I developed a psoriasis. Do you know what that is? It's a, a skin. Uh, malconditioned, where you ever have dry skin, some of us uh, uh, generate more skin than what would be considered quote unquote normal. And so we get these red and silvery uh, flaky patches all over our bodies. And uh, psoriasis is hereditary, but it's also uh, exacerbated by uh, mitigating factors such as diet. My diet sucked. I'm a recovering sugarholic. I used to be very overweight. I used to weigh anywhere from 235 to 250 pounds. I was addicted to junk food and sugar. And it's also exacerbated by uh, other factors such as stress, you know, worrying about everything. When I was a younger man, you know, I was a real Charlie Brown kind of guy. I just worried over every little thing. And I thought about things beyond my control. And so my skin got to be so bad, I was feeling less like human being or like reptile. Like literally chunks of skin were coming off my face. Oh my God. So I gave up on acting. And uh, believe it or not, I've been a security guard for 35 years. And I, I've, al I've always known, that's always been my bread and butter job. And I've always known that I was meant for bigger things in life, but I just didn't believe myself. And in the meantime, every so often, I would read a self-help book, you know, like Anthony Robbins, Awaken the Giant Within, you know, Unlimited Power, Deepak Chopra, Wayne Dyer, all these motivational speakers full of, you know, great philosophy and great uh, ideas and mindsets. And every so often I would have a moment of clarity, but it was kind of, I've been kind of spinning my wheels in life for 35 years. So my life changed in 2019. And I don't mean to be pushy or preachy about this stuff, Daniel. Again, I'm sharing my story. What I did was I was 53. 
I came home from work one day. I was feeling very depressed. I was feeling very sorry for myself. And I took a leap of faith. I reached out to God. And I said, God, our Heavenly Father, I've been hearing about you my whole life. I've always been something of an open-minded agnostic because at the end of the day, I don't think any of us really knows. I mean, it's the unknown. It's hypothetical. You know, you either, you either have faith or you don't have faith. Absolutely. So I had to accept about myself that I'm the kind of person who tries a little bit harder when I have it in my mind's eye that someone who loves me and accepts me unconditionally is rooting for me to manifest whatever it is that that, that, that I want to manifest for myself. And as I said earlier, it's always been writing. So just to backtrack a little bit, in 2005, I cranked out a bunch of short stories at work over a period of several months. I created this character called Lee Hacklin, who is a private investigator, and he's a smoker and a drinker, and he's a ladies' man, but he has a heart of gold, and he likes to help people and hates bullies. And I just I just wrote these short stories for my own amusement. I wasn't even thinking about self-publishing back then. I don't I don't think even think I was aware. Bless you. I don't even think I was aware of, <laughs> okay, I, uh, of Amazon back in the day. And so after I reached out to God and asked him to help me, you know, asking you shall receive, I dusted, I dusted off these short stories. You know, the pages were curled and they were yellow and I read them. And I don't know if you do any creative writing, but it was, the, it's hard to be objective about your own stuff, right? Oh, but yeah. it was, I read these stories as if somebody else had written them. And I thought, if these stories are written by Joe Blow instead of Sean Leister, I know I would like them. So that was the beginning of my journey, my new journey of becoming a self-published author. And for, excuse me, and for me, it was a tremendous uphill battle to get that first book posted. Plug, plug, plug. My first book is called The Collected Cases of Lee Hackley, 1970s Private Investigator Book One. Hang on while I take a deep breath. And so, um, you know, if I if I didn't have God in my life, because it was such a struggle to get that first book posted. As I said earlier, I was using Amazon and Amazon was rejecting my banking information. And then I would go to the bank and they said it was the right information. I mean, I had it in my mind. So I had three, like, how hard can this be? Eat three clicks of the mouse and boom, I'm a self-published author. It wasn't like that. If, if I didn't have God in my life, I probably would have given up after two or three tries because as a younger man, that was just my late motif in life. Not so much if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, which is how self manifestors think, right? They have it in their mind's eye. I'm going to do something that's really cool and it's really exciting. And there are going to be hiccups along the way. There's going to be potholes, right? And it's okay. And it's an important life lesson, I feel, maybe for some of your listeners, which is when you embark on a new journey, you have to have it in your mind's eye that it's not going to be smooth sailing, that sometimes the waters are going to be choppy. So because I had God in my life, I mean, I see God as kind of like Big Brother from 1984, you know, Big Brother is watching you, right? Oh, yeah. But in a good way, in a positive way, in a, in a paternal way, kind of like imagine your dad is watching you all the time. And we all want to make our dad, we all want to make our parents happy, right? We want our parents to be proud of us. So for me, that has been a, has been a motivator. So when I got that first book posted, when I saw on the screen for the first time, this was in 2019 now, congratulations, this magical day in my life, congratulations, your ebook has been published. I felt a sense of elation. I felt a sense of, so this is what, this is what that feels like, like starting something and there were hiccups along the way and actually crossing the finish line. Like some people live their whole lives that way. And then some of us are late bloomers. Have you seen the movie, Billy Elliot? about the boy who wants to be a ballet dancer. Have I you have seen that movie? Not. I have not. It, 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 spoiler warning, it takes place in the 1970s and uh, this 10 year old boy, he lives in a very hard bitten mining town and of all things, he wants to be a ballet dancer. And his dad's an alpha male and he's losing his mind. He's like, what, my son wants to be a ballet dancer? But eventually he comes around and he takes Billy to this ballet school in London and Billy's auditioning for them. And the auditioners ask him, well, Billy, how do you feel when you dance? And he says, well, I feel like electricity. And Daniel, that's how I felt when I posted that first book. I felt like electricity. And, and I, I was just walking in the air. I mean, I just wanted to stick my phone in everybody's face walking down the street in downtown Vancouver. It's like, hey, check it out. I'm a self-published author. And so I thought, you know, I'm 53 years old. I don't know how many years I have left. I'm lucky I made it this, this far. But I want to feel this way all the time. So now it's 2024. And actually, I have over 100 of these books online. Now, granted, they're not a thank you. <laughs> thank huge you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very huge much. kudos. No, uh, this, people no, are still no, stuck no. on their first book. People are still stuck on their first book yeah. trying to figure out and 
through the battle of psoriasis, you know, the skin condition, you blossom, you bloom, and you're like 2019, you know what? Amazon says no, but God still says yes. And here no, you are, a hundred plus books later, and continuing to drive it. No, you're a success story. I, I'm honored, truly, truly honored having you on the show, man, sharing this story. So there, there are ugly days, you know. We still have those ugly days, John. How do you stay motivated, mm -hmm. consistent through those ugly times, bad times, to continue on to get to the good times? Okay, I, I love this question because I have a mindset that works for me. And, and this is what all of us need to do with our lives. You know what the definition of insanity is, right? Doing the same thing over and over again. Over and over again, thinking you're gonna result, get different results. Right? right? If you have a dream, if you have this uh, idea that you wanna be a pilot, you wanna get a pilot's license, right? You're thinking about this every day. But 10 years later, you haven't made any you haven't taken so much as a baby step towards getting your pilot's license, just as, an just as an example. And I'm not throwing stones in a glass house. I'm not being judgmental. I'm only speaking from my own experience. I guarantee that whatever else that's going on in your life that might be great, you're suffering because that little bird is nattering away at your brain all the time. So just to answer your question, yes, of course, I still have bad days. And, and I, I recently went through a breakup. My girlfriend recently broke up with me, my girlfriend of three years. And so that was a bit of a heartache for me. But this is one of the nice things about getting older. The older we get, the more experiences we accumulate. And I think that we're younger, when we're younger, I mean, this is, I think human nature is, is, is universal in some ways. And I think this is one of the ways. When we're younger, the little hiccups of our lives feel more apocalyptic, right? It's like, oh, it's the end of the world. And of course, it's not the end of the world. It's, it's part of the journey. So to, so to try and answer your question in a succinct way, I'm on the journey of my life that's right for me. It took me a long time to get here, but better late than never. And this is why I'm reaching out to these people like yourself who have the same kind of positive energy or manifesting. I mean, it takes guts to do this. It takes guts to write. It takes guts to do a podcast. Put yourself up there. And because people will criticize you and people will make fun of you or they'll mock you or they will try to undermine you. And, and you just have to accept that in, in advance. And, and you, don't, you don't want those people in your life anyway. So, so whenever I have a bad day or a bad experience, as we all do, I just remind myself, it's like, hey, this is part of the journey. You know the story of Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden? You know, God created the world and he created Adam and Eve and he gave them paradise, right? Why did he give them paradise? I think he did it to teach human beings a lesson, which is, as it turns out, now, Daniel, this is just my opinion. And if you disagree, that's fine. Paradise sucks. We don't want paradise because if we had paradise, then there would be no purpose to our lives. We would have no challenges to overcome. We need that stuff. Now, we shouldn't go out of our way to create those challenges as we sometimes do if we make bad choices in our lives. But we have to accept in advance that there are things that are gonna happen in our lives that are sometimes beyond our control. And we just have to deal with them as best as we can. And the most important thing is to keep your eye on the ball. I will never stop writing. I will, this, is, this is what I was meant to do with my life. And, and like I said, better late than never. You know, Herman Wouk, who's one of my favorite writers, he wrote his last book when he was 100 years old. And, and I haven't read it, but it got great reviews. You know, here's another thing that I feel is important. We have to live in the present. We have to keep our minds focused on here and now. Because, because when we do that, then we're thinking about what's within our control. Here's another thing that's part of my, my quote-unquote philosophy, which I call Johnny's Way. And thank you for mentioning my Facebook group page. Over 700 members now. Nice. I Thank you so much. I don't watch the news. I'm a recovering news junkie. I used to listen to all these very conservative podcasts, you know, the John and Ken show and the Ben Shapiro show and Alex Jones. I used to listen to this stuff every day. And it was interesting and it was stimulating, but it was driving me crazy because all, all, it's just nothing but the mayhem and the madness and the chaos. The world is beautiful too. There, look at, let me look at that. All these people, you know, it, it, the news is never going to report the fact that most people are just are living their lives in peace, right? And so, and so once I stopped watching the news, again, 
it's part of my it's part of part of pushing our brains more and more towards what's within our control and that's when we feel powerful and, and like i said earlier if we had paradise there would be no purpose for our lives and it's purpose that gives our lives meaning you know we were meant to do more than just eat and sit in front of sit in front of our screens all day watching netflix it's it's okay to enjoy that stuff you know i, I think that we can when i like my beer on the weekend for example in mo in moderation but when when i drink my beer on the weekend on saturday and sunday nights there's a local bar that i go to when i do that i feel like i earned it you know i feel like you know what i work really hard monday to friday I, my, my security job is very physically demanding I'm, I'm writing like crazy i'm doing these podcasts i have my own podcast i have my group page when I, when I wasn't doing that stuff and I was being a couch potato back in 2019, then I was just being self-indulgent. I mean, basically I was living like a drug addict, right? I wasn't breaking into people's cars and breaking into people's homes to support my habit, but I put all of my eggs into people one basket. Now, what I didn't realize, you know, back then I thought I was having fun. My life is so much more fun now because I feel like a player. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm in the arena, I'm participating, I'm active, I'm proactive, I'm productive, I'm reaching out, I'm going for it. And 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 I did it, I, I did it in my 53rd year of corporeal existence. And I, and I am I about self-promotion? Absolutely 100 percent But I also like to think that I'm inspiring other people around the world who maybe feel the same way about themselves that I did back in 2019. You know, there are a lot of people walking around feeling bad about themselves, and they shouldn't. The reason that they feel bad about themselves is only because they bought into the weak and limiting, uh, 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 restrictive and, and punitive uh, uh, reverse philosophies of other people. And that's another thing. We have, we have to disassociate ourselves from those people because they will undermine our motivation if we allow them to. So anyway, that's my story in a nutshell. <laughs> no, no, no. And every, every single thing that you pointed out, John, is absolutely true. Um, I want to start with the most recent comment. You know, the saying goes that the five people that you surround yourself with, you become that sixth individual. So if you're around five writers, guess what you're going to start doing? You're going to start writing. You're around five millionaires. Guess what your pockets are going to start looking like? So people yeah. need to understand that. It's like, hey, let me take a look at my inner circle. But even before I start doing that, start looking within. You know, what is my passion? What gives me that electricity? that, uh, you know, Billy Elliot had pointed to, you know, and feeling that. So um, there was, one thing, um, and I'm stealing it uh, from the last podcast you were on, uh, you had talked about, you know, no, we don't have time. You know, uh, you get to be in, I think you had said, you get to be in 120, 125 years old. And before you know it, it's like, wait, I can't see the way I used to, you know, I can't walk the way I used to. And now you're looking at life like, oh, shoot, this is it. This is the ending. So although it's like, yeah, we may have all the time in the world, but whatever you're working on, whatever your passion is, it needs to start now. So no, John, you, you hit every single note. As it relates to being an author and you've got a hundred plus books right now, what's next for you? What's after this? You know, is it just more books? Are you looking at TV series? Are you looking at potential movies? Yes. Yes, right. yes. <laughs> like, break down what uh, 2028 of John Leister is going to be looking like. Okay. Uh, now streaming on Netflix, Lee Hackman, private investigator, based on characters created by John Leister, executive producer John Leister. That's the bell I want to ring. I want to I want to message a young, handsome actor and say, Brad or whatever his name is, I've got good news and bad news. The bad news is you're going to die someday. The good news is you're Lee Acklin. I absolutely have faith that my stories, I mean, look, I, I don't claim that my stories are great literature, but I do claim with some bias, obviously, that they're entertaining, that they're fun. I always, they're, they're old school stories. I mean, they're the kinds of stories that I grew up with when I was a kid. And I feel, and I don't need to get on my high horse about this, Daniel, but I feel that Hollywood is, is, is not really telling the kinds of stories that I'm telling, you know, the villains in, in movies and TV shows, yeah, they always have some some sympathetic aspects or they have some redeeming qualities. But those aren't those aren't the kinds of villains that I create in my stories. My, my villains are bad people who enjoy harming uh, other people. And you ever see Dirty Harry? 
there's a scene in Dirty Harry where, oh, where the, DA, the, the DA says to Harry, well, how do you know the killer's going to kill again? And Harry says, because he likes him, right? And, 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 that, and that's how I define evil. So you asked about, you know, where do I want to be in 2028? That's where I want to be. I want to, I want to hear actors uh, speaking uh, uh, dialogue that, that came from my imagination. I absolutely you know George Lucas back in the day when he was trying to sell Star Wars. Everybody oh, told him he was no. crazy. Left right? and right knows. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and that's an and and George set a great example because you have to keep banging on doors. You have to keep reaching out. You know, you can have a really great idea. I'll bet that the first person who invented the wheel, I'll bet somebody said to him, the wheel, the wheel, are you kidding? That's the dumbest thing ever. That's not going to fly. Well, fire, what you want, fire, you'll burn the village down. No, 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 we can cook our food. No, 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 we're going to kill you because you created, you know, there's always, there are always going to be people who, who have that negativity. You just have to, keep, you know, when you, it's like, it's like gold prospectors, right? It, it, how many years does it take before they finally find the gold or you go through the rut? you know, eventually you find a diamond, right? And so that, that persistence is the mindset of a successful person. And I have faith that before my corporeal existence ends, I'm going to connect with that one person who doesn't think that my stories are total garbage, who, 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 who will have faith, to, who has the power, who has the money, and, and can make a happen a streaming series happen. Or I have another series called Urban Tiger, I have, an, I have a standalone novel called The Treehouse Avengers, and, and I have it in my mind that, that my stories are absolutely worthy. You, you don't need that many people to like what you're doing. You know, like, you know, 90% of the world can be totally indifferent to, to whatever it is that you're doing, or they might have a negative opinion. But if a few people, if a small, you know, maybe a million, a million people is really not that many people, it or even 10,000, yeah. then you can have a career. And, and, and isn't it nice to have a career where you're actually doing what you really want to be doing? Because I don't think most people, when they go to work every day, are, are doing the thing that they wanted to do when they were children. You know, no child wants to be a bank manager. And I'm not disrespecting bank managers. It's a hard job. It's an important job. But what, what five-year-old kid wants to be a bank manager? Not having nope. no Ken dolls or Barbie dolls saying like, oh, hi, Mr. Ken, I came to the bank today. It's, you know, <laughs> oh, I'm flying on an airport or I'm going to a doctor's office. But yeah, no, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so that's, John, that's my dream. And I like to think I'm moving towards it. And the important thing is to be on the journey, to be on the journey of your life that's right for you. And never mind what other people think. Never mind whether it makes you any money. Here's, here's a standard that I feel is a good standard of, of of if, whether or not you feel good about yourself and then you'll write your uh, journey. Of and again, it's just my opinion. If you can look at yourself in the mirror and give yourself a thumbs up Thank and you. wink at yourself and smile and mean it and really mean it, then you're on the right path. But if you're like, uh, nah, then, then something's wrong and you better fix it because TikTok, and that's the nice thing about getting older. The older we get, I'm like, I'm 58 now. The older we get, the more aware we become of the finiteness of time. And and that for me that's been very motivating. Beautiful, awesome. Well, John, listen, we got to wrap this up here real quick. But I really had an honor uh, for you being on the podcast. Uh, can you give again as far as where folks can find you at on social media, or sure. even I'll shoot you an email to get in contact with you? Okay, thank you so much, Daniel. I uh, very much reciprocated those feelings. So my email is John Leister, J O H N L E I S T E R, in small letters, six one one at hotmail dot com time permitting, and I've done this before, I would be more than happy to email uh, anybody out there who's interested, one of my books or one of my short stories. My Facebook group page is called Johnny's Way. Uh, as I said, over 700 members. I actually took a picture of myself uh, holding a book written by a best-selling author named Mike Madden. He writes to Jack Ryan. So, you know Jack Ryan, Tom Clancy? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when, when he passed away, this writer named Mike, Mike Madden, he took over. He's one of the writers who took up the series. So anyway, I took a picture of myself and I posted it on his Facebook page. And I told him about my group page, Johnny's Way. Well, guess what? He joined. That's you know, awesome. his best-selling author joined my group page. Like, this is the world that we're living in. Man, and that's another thinking. important message for anybody out there who's my age. For goodness sakes, take advantage of this technology. It's easy to use. And, and, and oh, here's another thing. I don't use Amazon anymore. I use Draft2Digital. 
And, okay. and anybody there who wants to be a self-published author, I recommend using this website called Draft to the number two digital. It's easy to use, it's free. And what they do is they springboard, if you ever want to write a book, I don't know if you're already an author, but it springboards your books to other platforms. So all of my books are available on Kobo, uh, Indigo, uh, Barnes & Noble, Apple, and three or four uh, other platforms. And my Facebook uh, page is John Leister. And if you go to YouTube and if you type in John Leister author, uh, you can check out some of the other podcasts that I've been on. I pretty much talk about the same stuff. <laughs> No, it's, it's awesome. And, you know, the message just needs to be repeated over and over again, you know, so people can finally understand like, wow, if I'm consistent in something, here's my success. John Leister is proof. You know, if I manifest these things with faith, here's the proof. If I'm focusing on God, focusing on myself, focusing on who my inner circle is, here come the results. Here's the proof. So you nailed everything today. And John, I really appreciate having you here, man. Definitely Thank looking you. forward to having you come back on. Uh, probably within the year when Netflix gives you a call. Cough, cough. <laughs> Off, off. So uh, thank you again, uh, John. I really appreciate having you on, man. And I'll uh, be talking to you again soon. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I mean, it. thank you. It's a great honor to be on your podcast. And I really do appreciate it very much. And I will, uh, I will post a link on my Facebook page to your website. Cool, man. I'll be talking to you soon. Cheers. Have a nice day. You too. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to the RNG Radio Show. Be sure to like and subscribe for more episodes and future content. If you'd like to learn more, visit us at danielumstead.com. Stay blessed, my fellow millionaires.